Um, let, yep, yeah, let's see. What did we get up to this week? Okay, so. Hi, I'm Liz Watkin. I run Open Coven, and if you don't know what Open Coven is, I create embroidery kits and magical fibre art offerings for uh, people who are interested in using uh, slow stitching and hand stitching techniques to work magically and spiritually. This weekend we went to the Kid Hop Party, which uh, takes place at the Orange Peel. The Orange Peel is a local music venue here in Asheville that's kind of an institution and they do this really great thing uh, like once a month in the winter where they have a an early kind of hip-hop party for kids and you can go along and it's from 10 a.m to 1 p.m on a saturday usually it's the first saturday in the month and they play old school hip-hop it's really fun you can get ice cream kids get a little break dance class and to be honest, I love it a lot. And I think I probably love it more than CC. Last weekend was um, the in bulk ritual for my local cups group. And in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about cups and about finding your own pagan or witchy community. And I am sure that this will not be the last time that I talk about it. I am going to share with you a Valentine's Day spell that you can do using fiber art techniques and yeah I was 17 when I started down the path of witchcraft and Wicca and paganism and I was really fortunate in that I already had friends who were interested in those things. They were a wonderful guide, they made book suggestions which when you first start out is always really helpful and I felt very much supported. I then went to university and started a pagan society and that's a long time ago. I'm 45 now and I was, what, 18 then? And I had my own website. For me, paganism and witchcraft was always about building a community and being part of a community. But for some of us, we like to go it alone. Now that might be because we just want to do it by ourselves and that's fair enough. But for some of us, it's because we're not quite sure who we can approach or how we can find our community. And that's a shame. So in this vlog, I'm going to give you some ideas on how to find your people. Pagan groups tend to be incredibly inclusive, at least I feel like they should be. So if you're in the United States, you should definitely consider looking in your community for a cups group. And there's more of them than you might think. Cups, which is C-U-U-P-S, stands for the Covenant of Unitarian Universalist Pagans. The Unitarian Universalist Church did something really incredible where they invited local pagan groups to be part of their community. The one that I uh, am part of here in Western North Carolina, we do our own rituals every pagan holiday or Sabbath, and there's eight of them in the calendar. And part of the fact that we're part of the Unitarian Universalist Church means we can use their space, which means that we can have our ritual in a really nice uh, sheltered area that is discreet. We have also the use of the kitchen, so we have a potluck after each ritual. They will also support us by coming along to our rituals and seeing what we're doing. And so it's been a really helpful thing for me because I am able to plug into a community of pagans here in the Asheville area. So definitely look on the uh, Unitarian Universalist Church website, Google Cups near me. If you are uh, completely new to the community, this is an excellent place to start. Now, if you have been a churchgoer in the past, 
you might feel very self-conscious about going to these groups. It's not like going to a church, trust me. I grew up in the church, my father is an Anglican minister, and often people who have been, who have kind of traumatic or negative experiences at church, they don't want to join another group because they think it's going to be the same as it was before. And I'm going to say that it isn't like that. Cups groups are very democratic, at least in my experience. Yes, there's often a small group or a couple of people that will lead it or that 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 will be responsible for the administrative aspect of it, which is to say they'll send emails out letting people know of events and they'll get all the paraphernalia together for the ritual. But for the most part, I have found that if you want to be more part of the group, you will be welcomed. And if you just want to come to the ritual and you don't want to stay for the potluck, for example, because you're an introvert like me, or you just want to go and experiment, no one is going to pressure you into coming back no one is going to make you feel like now you are committed to something. So it's a really great way to, without any judgment, without any commitment, and with no suspicions, go along and see what it's like to be part of a group ritual that is a pagan ritual. Other places you can find community. Go to your local metaphysical stores. Metaphysical stores or pagan supply stores or uh, crystal shops, they will often have either adverts in uh, in like a little community section or they might have newsletters or they might have people who work there who are willing to give you information on local groups. I know that in some areas of the world, particularly in the United States, this can be easier to find than, than in other places. Here in Asheville, our local kind of big metaphysical store is Raven and Chrome, though we do have others. That's one of the great things about Asheville. And in that metaphysical store, there is a lot of people who come from all over the place because where they live, there's nothing like that. So if you don't have anything like this in your area, try and find something nearby that you could drive to just to get some more information. Another thing you can do is look at online rituals that you can pay to be part of. And I know that for some people, resources are limited and that makes perfect sense. But I've been part of several online rituals that I highly recommend. One group in particular is the Witch Wave podcaster Pam Grossman and the uh, performance poet Jana Kostucki. They work together on a regular basis and put together rituals that you can access via Zoom. Now, this, these are really wonderful and trust me, I've done many many of these rituals i love them now these online rituals are great because if you're a little self-conscious about going somewhere if you're a little bit nervous about doing that or indeed if there's nothing available where you are you are able to participate in ritual and if you've never done it before this is a great way to experience what it might feel like the other great thing about it being online is it's discreet so if you're someone who is in inverted commas in the broom closet or you're not quite ready to kind of tell everybody about what you've chosen to do, this is a good opportunity to kind of dip your toe in. And also it means that you're not saying to people, I'm going now to a coven or I'm going now to perform a pagan ritual. You can just do it quietly because it's a Zoom session. Some of these online rituals, like the one that Pam Grossman and Janica Stuckey do, the, the community aspect is a little limited because of the sheer number of people involved, right? So you're not necessarily going to meet people, but you can be part of an, an ritual experience and, and feel how it feels. Now, another thing you can do is start your own coven. A coven can be just a small group of you coming together for a shared purpose. Um, you might have friends who are also interested in it, and maybe they're also beginners too, or perhaps they're not, they're less than a beginner. They haven't even kind of gone down that road at all, but they might have some curiosity. I would say approach those people. It doesn't need to be a big group. And I'm going to say I prefer smaller groups. So I'm a member of two different covens and they're both three people, me and two other friends. There's a lot of trust involved in starting a coven. So the better you know those people, and the smaller the group is, the easier it is to manage, the easier it is to organise for when you're all trying to fit your busy schedules together. And it will be easier to feel vulnerable in front of those people because it's a smaller group. That's been my feeling anyway. That's how I've experienced it. The two covens that I am part of, one is in person, so we meet on a fairly regular basis. And then the other one is virtual. 
With the one where we meet together, there is a bit more of an elaborate setup. We have a fire, we have a special place where we meet, or one of a couple of places. We'll do a little bit of ritual. Sometimes we don't do any ritual at all and we just sit together and we talk. My virtual coven is equally rewarding. And the reason that we meet virtual is for a couple of reasons. We started during COVID and one of my friends has a lot of immuno issues and some accessibility issues, they have disabilities. And so going out and being in a group was not much of an option for them during COVID. And then the other person I knew would be interested lives nowhere near me. They live a couple of states away. Now, to be clear, the two people I approached for the virtual coven, they weren't practicing witches per se. One of my friends was definitely very, very curious about all of this and wanted to learn more. And then the other friend was a lot more of a witch, but she didn't always sort of use that moniker she has very much a, a practice of her own that I would call witchcraft. And I don't even know if she calls it witchcraft. So we meet virtually on a regular basis. Sometimes we do a guided meditation, but we always have a oracle card or tarot pull. So we sit in our spaces and I like to set up my space with candles and sort of um, a, a ritual space because it is a ritual experience. And then they meet with me as well. And we do a tarot card pull. And that has been really great as well because it's it's really convenient. We do it in the evenings. Again, it's easy to organise because there's just three of us. And because we're virtual, it makes it a lot more straightforward as well. We're not trying to leave our house to go somewhere. I can do it and then I can go and spend an hour with in my coven and then I go and put my daughter to bed and I get on with my evening. It's really great because it's convenient and it mean and because it's convenient it, it's accessible and it means we're more likely to stick with the practice. So here are, those are some ideas that you can have to jumpstart your opportunity to to form a community or become part of a community. It's daunting at first and I am in full support of people doing solo witchcraft or being hedge witches people who just practice on their own. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But sometimes, especially when you're starting out, it's nice to find other people and hopefully people who can share resources with you, experiences. And I think that you needn't be nervous about trying to find your community. stop after the kid hop so that Cece could get her earrings changed. She had them, her ears pierced at Thanksgiving. Hey everyone, so Valentine's Day is coming up and it's not strictly a pagan holiday which is to say that the Wheel of the Year, which is eight different pagan holidays or Sabbaths, does not include Valentine's Day. But I do think we should do a little project because why not? Uh, I'm going to show you how to make a heart charm that you can either keep for yourself or give away to attract good things. So this is one of my scrap boxes. Basically what I do is every time I do a project that requires um, pieces of fabric, I keep all of the scraps that are left over and it doesn't matter how small. So for example, here you can see I've got a tiny little bit, bit of a scrap there, which I'll probably use for something. Mm -hmm. 